Fenceman Dan back with you with Midwest Fence, MidwestFence.com. Today we're talking about property surveys. This is Wayne. Wayne is a licensed surveyor and Correct. he's going to be helping us today. Wayne, why does a person need to get a survey? If they're building a fence and they think they know where the fence line is, why do they need to get a survey? If you're going to take the time to uh, put in a fence and make that decision, uh, spend the money, uh, you should try to get it as close to the property line as you you can because obviously for uh, reasons you don't want it over the property line because you're going to cause a dispute with the neighbor or that's going to be the next owner of the house is going to have a problem if the neighbor gets a survey um, but you also don't want it too far off the property line because in, in 30 years people are going to start assuming that that fence was kind of built on the property line right and so that can warp into ownership um, after a minimum of 15 years, if you've been maintaining it, um, and people have assumed that it's on the property line. If somebody wants to take you to court or wants to claim that that's now theirs, they have a case. For a homeowner to be able to guess where that line is within a few inches is, is very hard to do. What do you do to prep before you get to a, a site? So once we get a, a job order, we have the address. That's typically all we have. Most counties in the metro area have a GIS application. We can uh, uh, search that address and that will pull up the um, parcel maps. Um, sometimes the GIS will have a link to the actual plat that was um, drawn up and laid out for this uh, neighborhood. And sometimes we can do computations in the office beforehand uh, based on the section uh, public land survey and that we kind of then will already have a general idea of where the the irons should be gis is global imaging geographic geographic information systems man i was way off and so yeah. in terms of building a fence uh, some folks hand us a written survey and want us to use that, but a pin locate is different. Help us understand that. Probably what you're talking about like would be, uh, there's different terms, but um, like a certificate of survey is the actual paper that's going to have your legal description, it's going to show your boundary, it's going to show your house, um, and that's a type of survey that you typically would get for uh, when you build the new home or uh, you're doing an addition and need some sort of permit. But a pin locate um, like an all stake or two stake is just physically us coming out and, and marking your corners. There's no drawing. Um, we do we do have the coordinates. We do have job files. Um, if something are, uh, comes up that we need to share with a different surveyor, if there's an argument, um, we do we can send you a, a letter that says a licensed surveyor uh, did the survey. But as far as a drawing or a certificate of survey, there. It's, there is none on, on some of the jobs. Got it. Yeah, you guys are basically looking for some markers out on the ground, physically marked up, that you can put in the fence that's not going to get over the line, that's close to the proper line, mm -hmm. that you're not going to have any conflicts with the neighbors, that you can be assured that it's in the right spot. Right. Talk about the tools that you're going to use to <laughs> determine the... Yeah, the, the initial one is just a shovel and a metal detector. Okay. Nothing fancy, really. Got it. Got it. Um, and with these, we try to find some existing monuments that may or may not be in the ground. So a, a lot of homeowners will try to find the corners themselves or know where they should be, um, but they may not even be there. In some of the newer areas, they you should be all there. Um, but when you get in areas from the 1900s and, and turn of the century stuff, good luck. So it should be in this general area, but you know, sometimes where it looks like it should be, it's not. But yeah, I don't see, I don't think there's one here. Wow, crazy. Yeah. So if you cannot find a property monument, will you place one as a licensed surveyor? Will you place that? Yes. We'll use uh, irons that we have found and, and retrace in where we, we believe this, this one should be based on my opinion. Um, and then I'll set a new iron where I think it should be. Got it. And a licensed land surveyor is the only person that can actually set a property corner. And you're licensed to do that? Yep. 
That's Here's it. our uh, tea steak, which is very suspicious. <laughs> right. Or 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 not. So I don't know. the assumption is when I see this, is somebody put this here to mark the property corner. It's not always true. Since we use metal detectors and then somebody decides to put a fe metal fence post next to the actual pipe, it makes it actually more difficult to try to find the actual survey marker. So yeah, I mean, you look around these typically as I just start digging and it lines up with the fence. So it's probably marking something and it, and it runs down this, you know, you, you get a lot of just observation stuff. Does it look right? It kind of does. So there's probably something here. And then there we go. There's probably the property corner. Aha, uh -huh. bingo. So when you find something like that, the chances are that's your corners are pretty good. Yep. It looks right, it's fitting occupation, but we still need to, we can't just assume it's right without checking it. So I've got some survey nomenclature I wanted to ask you about. So boundary stakes and property monuments, I think a lot of our customers get those two mixed up. Property corner, lot corner, boundary marker, survey marker. But a survey stake is typically made of wood and it can be moved around. Okay, by... yeah. So somebody will call us and say, somebody took out my property corner. Mm -hmm. And we'll say, did they take out the, the lath? or did they actually dig out the iron in the ground? And 99% of the time, they just took out the lath. Right. It's actually uh, against the law to disturb a survey marker. Uh, easements. Yes. So we've got utility easements, we've got private easements, we've got easements by necessity, we've got um, prescriptive easements. Can you talk about each of these? So, uh, I mean, there's, like you just mentioned, there's a whole bunch of different types of easements. Most residential lots will have a drainage and utility easements um, that aren't necessarily all the time utilized, but they're just automatically applied to the lot when they create them. The city just requires it that you give a buffer so that they can place their utility lines and cable lines if they need to. And here's one right here. <laughs> Here's a, here's a, uh, an easement for the city put in this culvert uh, for a storm sewer, and um, it happens to be on our customer's property. Yep, and typically what they'll try to do, and it's not always um, the case, but what they try to do is center that stuff on the lot lines. Are you allowed to build a fence within an easement? Good question. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, got it. <laughs> uh, you're gonna wanna check with the city. Uh, there may be an easement document that was recorded with the county or and or with the city that's gonna say in there what's allowed, what's not allowed. Like in, when you have this situation, this is one I would just wait, you know, I'll look for them, but I would typically just wait until I have a mathematical position to where I can actually stake out to it and be a lot closer than looking in a 20 foot radius. We've got an existing fence over here yep. that, you know, the neighbor installed, maybe it represents a property line. You've got these utility boxes here. One thing I noticed too, is that they built their fence probably out into the right of way. I wouldn't do that because when they come and redo the storm sewer or sanitary sewer, or they make some street improvements, that's all getting taken out right because if you have it on your own private property at least it has a chance of surviving the construction so i mean i'll look for stuff in in these areas yeah but that's metal if it's a ways away from those boxes we'll get it but to find this one i would use the other corners that we found and recompute in based on the math on the the original plat and i should be able to get pretty close to where this one should be tell us about this piece of equipment that you're putting up now this is called a total station it's a very expensive tape measure and uh, protractor, compass, if you want to call it that. Got it. It measures points. distances and angles. I can see both of these that we found. Then we can compute out where that one is and see where it falls. But I'm hoping I can see that one from here as well. Now that thing will start looking for this prism. Searching. Target locked. So uh, using those other found monuments, target we can compute out where this one should be. No target. And we found an iron monument. Is there, there's a plastic cap on it? That one has a cap on it, yep. That's just a half inch pipe. 
how long? It's probably 14 inches long. They can vary, but it's typically, you know, foot and a half or so. I've located that iron and I located the iron in the back here. So now I can move to the front. You re-triangulate in off your known coordinates to find more corners or set corners uh, once you get to that point, so. So this would be just, uh, we use these to mark up the corner so the homeowners and uh, the fence installers can see where the corner is, but the actual corner is in the ground. This one happens to be fairly deep. All right, that's gonna wrap up our video on property pin locating for today. I hope this information was helpful. Thanks to Wayne for being our guide. For more information on fencing, go to MidwestFence.com. And remember, good fences make good neighbors. Searching.